Hello and welcome to another bikepacking Q&A video. In this video we're going to be looking at aluminium versus steel. Which is best for bikepacking? Or, if you're American, aluminium and steel. I've seen this question plastered all over the internet, which material is best for bikepacking? There's some very strong opinions for steel, some on the other hand prefer aluminium or titanium or carbon fibre. In this video, we're going to look at the two most common materials used for frames, aluminium and steel, and we're going to compare the pros and cons of each. Let's start with the aluminium frame. This is my Sonder Frontier. This has been all over the world, and I've done a separate walkthrough video if you want to actually see me talk about the bike in detail. I'll leave a link up there and in the description. This is pretty much an entirely aluminium-based bike. So what are the pros of the aluminium-based frames? Number one, the stiffness to weight ratio tends to be better than if it was made out of steel. What do I mean by that? For any given stiffness, you can make the frame lighter if it's made out of aluminium versus steel. So there's that. Number two is the cost tends to be much less. You can buy a good quality aluminium frame usually for less than a good quality steel frame. And thirdly, aluminium is pretty tough. I think a lot of people give it a bad rap because over time it can start to wear out and break. But on the whole, it is a very stiff material and very tough, and it can last you a very long time, especially when you compare it to the likes of carbon fiber. That leads me nicely on to some of the cons of having an aluminium-based frame. The first one is because the frames are quite stiff, it tends to result in a harsher ride quality, which is something you can mitigate with suspension components and fatter tires, for example. But assuming all of the components were the same on an aluminium versus a steel bike, you would probably start to notice over long distances the harshness of the ride versus the steel. The second one is quite a major argument we hear from the people who really like steel bikes, is that the frames do fatigue over time. And what that means is as you knock it about, it gets dents in it, it starts to become weaker and those dents turn into cracks and it basically gets worse from there. You don't really get that with steel. But aluminium, it does happen. I've experienced this firsthand on some of my road bikes in the past where I've crashed it. I found a big dent on the frame and over time it's just weakened and basically sheared off, which isn't good. So there is that to think about, but on the whole, they are pretty tough and that is quite rare and it does take quite a lot of time and knocks for that to happen. So on the whole, they will last you a fairly long time. That kind of links to the final con really in that if that were to happen to you and you do get a dent or a knock in your frame, it is quite difficult to repair aluminium. Because it does get worse over time, it's quite a challenge to actually keep it rigid and keep it working. So for that reason, it tends not to be the go-to choice for long distance bikepacking all over the world. Moving on to the steel bike, this is my Sonder Broken Road Steel. If you're interested in this setup or this bike in general, again, I'll leave a link up there or in the description if you want to watch it. What are the benefits of running a steel bike? The first one is it's very, very durable. It's very difficult to properly damage a steel frame bike. They're super tough, and if you do unfortunately crash it and put a dent in it, it can be something that can be remedied. And let's be honest, if you're carrying loads of stuff, you want the frame to be durable. You don't want any issues with cracks or the frame breaking when you're out on your bikepacking trips. Which kind of links into my next pro is that it's easier to repair. So people who are doing long distance world tours do tend to go for steel bikes for that reason. I have, however, been speaking to some bike builders and what used to be a simple welding job isn't quite as easy as you might think nowadays because there's so many different steel compounds out there. It's not guaranteed that you're going to be able to weld it back together if the worst should happen. However, it is very difficult to get in a position where you've completely knackered your frame. You have to have a pretty major accident, especially on a steel bike. So it's not something I'm particularly worried about. And thirdly, one of the main reasons people choose steel is that because it does flex ever so slightly, so it does become very, very comfortable over the long run. It does iron out a lot of bumps and absorb some of that. It's not as stiff as aluminium or carbon fiber, so you do find that it is much more comfortable over long distances. And lastly, although I mentioned aluminium is cheaper than steel, you could always argue, well, steel is still a lot cheaper than a titanium frame or a carbon one, for example. So it very much puts it in that generally affordable range. So moving on to the cons of having a steel bike, I've kind of touched on the first one already. It will cost you more to get a good quality steel frame versus a good quality aluminium one. The second is that steel is just heavier than aluminium. I don't care what anyone says, a steel frame 99% of the time is gonna be heavier than an equally specced 
aluminium frame of the same quality. Now this is probably not a big deal if you're carrying lots of stuff anyway like I do. The weight isn't really something that's going to be a major factor. It does weigh more but when you're riding with all your stuff are you going to notice that? Probably not. And the third one is something that some people might be interested in. It's the shape of the bike. Because steel bikes are still mostly made using steel tubes, either welded or butted together, you do find that the shapes can be quite limited. Nowadays you see very aerodynamic shapes with aluminium and also carbon fibre that are completely different to how bikes used to look back in the day. But steel kind of still looks the same and some people really like it for that kind of retro look. But if you are going for absolute performance, then you're probably not going to be able to get the most aerodynamic frame using a steel bike. But this isn't really something that I'm too bothered about, I'll be honest. And lastly, something you might not have thought about is that steel bikes can actually corrode or rust over time, which is something you've just got to keep your eye on. Make sure you've plugged all of these holes on the frame to stop water getting in and try not to leave it outside for too long. But that is something to be aware of. You don't really get that with aluminium bikes. So which is best for bikepacking, aluminium or steel. I normally sit on the fence in these videos and say well it kind of depends on your goals and how much money you want to spend and so on but in this video I'm going to give you a definitive answer. Although most of my bikes are aluminium and I've taken them all over the world in all conditions and they've been you know ridden pretty hard I would still have to say the best material for a bikepacking bike has to be steel. It's super robust, it's going to last you a lifetime, it's much more comfortable over the long run and although it is more expensive, it's not that much more expensive than an aluminium bike and it's probably going to last you a lifetime if you look after it. So that's my opinion, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.